Evie. And I'm Emily. And welcome to The Current. Where we talk about our current favourite YA novels. Our team have selected 30 books we loved from the past year in the hopes that you will too. Today's genre is It's Complicated. Fate. <laughs> Indeed, which we luckily have right here. We have, yeah. So this is by Lex Croucher. Yes. And it's a funny one because um, I was at a work training day with our lovely colleagues mm -hmm. in the library service and one of them said, oh, what's the best book that you've read in the last year? And this was in 2023. And one of the wonderful library assistants said, Gwen and Art are not in love. Straight away. Didn't nice. even wait. Just straight away knew that, that was her number one book from the whole year. And I thought, hmm, I'm intrigued now. I think yeah, I'm yeah. going to have to read it, aren't Absolutely. I? Absolutely. And then it popped up on the current list, and I thought, great, well, I'm going to read that one. And I really enjoyed it. I've never read a book that kind of mixes um, the modern day romantic tropes with being set in, like, you know, just after Arthurian times. I was going to ask, yeah, like, I, I know that it's sort of set in kind of the King Arthur court and things like that, but it's got quite a modern. Uh, Storyline, should we say, or the modern romance? Yes, definitely, and it's LGBTQ plus romance mm -hmm. as well. Um, and it's I initially reading it thought it was going to be set like you say in the Arthurian court with Merlin, etc. But it's actually a little bit further along than that in the okay. history. But they are um, sort of long distance relatives of King Arthur. I see. Um, but yeah, it's very much set in that time, um, the Middle Ages, and it's very clever how it mixes the two because you've got things like jousting and the incredible outfits that they're wearing their clothing yes. costume is very important yes and they live in a castle you know um, sure, sure. Yeah. but at the same time there's these two characters the titular characters Gwen and Art and they are Gwen is the uh, princess and Art is like a kind of the lord a local lord's son mm -hmm. and they get thrust together, they're betrothed from the moment they're born and that they're going to get married. Um, there's kind of political connections that will be beneficial for both the Lord sure, and the, yeah. the King and Queen. And they essentially both discover that they're not interested in each other at all because neither of them are straight. So when they discover that, it actually works out massively in their favour because it means that they can kind of cover for the other. A bit of a Merlin's beard situation. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. Exactly. So um, they go. On, they have this. They hatch this plan that they're going to fake date. You know, fake date. This is the when the modern ties in with the sure, the sure. Older. Yeah. They're going to fake date, pretend that they've really fallen hard for each other, mm -hmm. um, and convince everyone that they, you know, they're heading towards their marriage. And secretly, they're both starting relationships um, with other people. And it was really nice to watch both of those relationships develop. Mm. And the what I love as well, I always love this in a romance, is it's um, dual perspective. So you get a little bit of um, Gwen's perspective, and when you get bored of that, don't worry, because a bit of art's perspective <laughs> comes in. So um, you never can't, you, you're with both characters, you're kind of hearing both of their thoughts. And um, I really enjoyed it. And the romance for both of them was really sweet, but I have to say, the art's romance mm -hmm. is, I don't want to say, I don't want to say any spoilers here, mm -hmm. the art's romance was just so sweet and wholesome and lovely and quite difficult in a lot of ways. I can't say any spoilers, so I've got it. I'm not going to say too sure, much, sure, sure, sure. but um, yeah, I just, I really enjoyed it. And it's a lovely one. If you're into kind of historical fiction and that era of time as well, but you want to read a romance with all the kind of modern day tropes, highly recommend. Nice. we are talking about is Check and Mate by Ali Hazelwood. And this is another one that Evie has read and enjoyed. Would you like to tell us about it? I'm assuming something chess related. It is chess related. How did you guess? <laughs> um, check and mate uh, blew me away. Um, it's absolutely fantastic uh, romance. I've read all of Ali Hazelwood's adult romance and adore them. Absolutely love them. And when it came out that she was releasing this young adult book, I was like, right, come on, let's go. I've got to get this. <laughs> and I was lucky enough to get a um, advanced reader copy as well. So I got to read it before it came out. And I, perks of being a librarian. Yeah, these are the perks. Um, and I loved it. It's 
follows the story of um, this incredible chess player who basically doesn't want to play chess anymore. Mm -hmm. She decides, no, it's not for me, I'm hanging it up, don't want to do it anymore. But then she's offered this financial uh, situation that she can't refuse. So she enters into these this competition um, to try and win chess and also a lot of money as well for her family. Okay, um, yeah. Her mum has some health conditions mm -hmm. and she's also got uh, younger sisters as well because so she wants to support them um, and this is the only way she can kind of think of that she'll be able to do so. And a romance starts with the other top chess player who also happens to be, luckily, her age. Um, so they uh, you, yeah, no child prodigies. <laughs> no, you often think about um, chess players, you know, as being older. There's definitely mm. that's definitely kind of a, a stereotype, isn't it? But yeah, these are young chess players, up and coming chess players who are incredibly talented. And I don't play chess. Mm. In fact, I I tried to learn and it didn't go very well. I, I can play well very play. badly. Yes, would lose a lot. Yes, me too. I'll probably lose in about a move, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Um, do you think that the, the Queen's Gambit has sort of made chess cool again? Because I'm oh. sort of seeing a kind of um, more and more books coming out with sort of a chess dynamic and it's, uh, it seems to have sort of had a bit of a resurgence. Absolutely, yeah. So um, I love The Queen's Gambit and that obviously is a book originally, mm -hmm. but that was written quite a few years ago. And recently we had obviously Check and Mates, but um, The First Move by Jenny mm -hmm. Ireland as well. And that, that book's fantastic too. So um, we wanted that one to be on the current as well, but unfortunately we, couldn't, we were like, we can't have two chess books, it's crazy. Chess power. It, yeah. Too much chess. But if you really, if you enjoy chess, and, um, and even if you don't like me, um, or you enjoy check and mate, you'll definitely enjoy the first move as well, because it's uh, different enough that they're not too samey, but definitely kind of that, that um, ongoing theme of chess throughout. Mm. Mm. I think also, you know, two, uh, two romantic characters in competition with each other, the, the, the tropes, you know, speak exactly. Themselves, so yeah. Yeah, there's always going to be that fun tension. Yeah, yeah, competitors to lovers. Yeah, it's great. Nice. So, and actually, I would say as well, one of my favourite things about Check and Mate was the ending. And I think sometimes endings in romance books are really difficult to get right. Is it usually a fade to black, happily ever after? They get married, they have kids. Yeah. Woohoo! It's yeah, like, yeah. oh, okay, great. That's not necessarily real life. Mm -hmm. But the ending of Check and Mate, I thought was very clever. Obviously, I'm not going to say any more than that, but I, well. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, highly suspicious and unfairly cute. Again, it, much like Ali Hazelwood, I'm familiar mm -hmm. with Talia Hibbert's adult romance. Right. And okay. I'm a big fan of the Brown Sisters series. Yeah. It's like a trilogy. Uh, they're great. And I've read a few of the books by her too. And they're all wonderful. So again, when I saw that she was doing a YA book, I was like, uh, thank you very much. I'll read check, that. Check, check. Exactly. So this is the story of Bradley and Celine. Mm -hmm. And they were really good friends. And then they kind of stopped being friends. And I'm not going to say any more than that because, again, spoilers. But they stop being friends and then they end up thrown together on this kind of away trip. Mm -hmm. um, Celine is super clever, like super smart and like top of the class. And Bradley or Brad, um, he is this, he's really smart as well. They kind of, they're competing all the time um, for kind of the top spot. But Bradley has OCD mm. and that makes things slightly more difficult for him. Um, he manages to kind of, he manages to manage. He manages his OCD really well. Yeah. But it is still something that plays on his mind that he thinks about a lot. And their romance is really heartwarming mm. because you kind of see the both of them having those internal struggles. Celine very much believes that she'll never be good enough and that she'll never be popular. Mm. Um, she's a bit of a conspiracy theorist as well. Interesting. Okay. So she, okay. she has like a... a social media presence and she talks about conspiracy theories are we talking flat earth or a bit more we're uh... talking like aliens okay fun like um alien abductions yeah. alien experiences those kinds of things um which is i think a pretty funky addition to her character yeah that's not what you see a lot of is no sort of yeah, interesting. Okay. So I really enjoyed that one, and there's some really wonderful scenes in it. It's also quite funny. There's mm. some really funny bits in it. I think you can kind of tell that from the title. Mm. It's kind of a playful. It's a great it? title. Yeah, um, but there are some funny bits too. So. So is she highly suspicious, and he's unfairly cute, or are they both suspicious and cute? I think they're both suspicious. Both suspicious and cute. And cute. Yeah. 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 
good. And again, this is one that is told from two perspectives. So you you get inside Bradley's head mm. and you also get inside Celine's head. And I think with romance, that's crucial. It's crucial. you need to know what they're both thinking. And you need to get to the point where you're saying, just talk to each other. Exactly, very much so. So yeah, that's a great one as well. of our It's Complicated is called Broken Hearts and Zombie Parts. And this is something that I am very keen to read uh, because I love uh, movie making and behind the scenes stuff. And the, again, brilliant title. It is a brilliant love title, that. isn't it? So fun, immediately. Just like, great, great cover, great title. Tell me, what should I read this? You should definitely read it. Yeah. It's hilarious <laughs> and ridiculous and great in every way. Awesome. So um, our main character has got to have heart surgery and he's sure. absolutely terrified, mm -hmm. as he probably would be. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so he's really scared, and he's like, right, before I get this heart surgery, I want to film this um, film with my with my friends, make mm -hmm. a short film. He's already done that before, he's experienced, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you know? And he's made some films before, but he wants this one to be his big one. I think the film they, they make is called Zombie Honeymoon. And, so it's um, all the B-movie, kind of schlocky, yeah, love that, yeah. love that. And, um, but he also, that's not his only plan for this heart surgery, he wants to find himself a boyfriend. Ah. He's not had very much luck in love, to be honest. <laughs> um, and he continues to not really have very much luck in love. Okay, yeah. Until the end of the book, no spoilers. I'm mm -hmm. going to be saying that for every single book, aren't I? But it cracked me up so much. Mm. Um, I actually listened to the audiobook version oh, fun. of this. So we have the audiobook version available to borrow and it's very well done, it's hilarious, the pacing is just right and I really enjoyed listening to it, I kind of wanted to be listening to it all the time because I was very immersed in the world. And the romance you think is going one way and then kind of maybe flips on its head a little bit there. Mm. There are some brilliant side characters, some hilarious side characters. Which is so vital in romance Oh, it? absolutely. So vital, yeah. yeah. Um, one of my favourite side characters is the owner of a scrapyard who lets them film in the in the scrapyard. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie film. Um, he has these two dogs, these massive dogs that everyone's very scared of, but they're big softies really. Um, and he ju he just thinks he's going to be famous. This film is going to make him famous, and then right, okay. like Brad Pitt <laughs> is going to discover him. And it's just brilliant. He's just such a great character. But yeah, it's um it's a really it's a heartwarming book. It really is, mm -hmm. and the relationship between the main character and his mum is really sweet as well. They have a very close relationship, um, which is lovely to read about. So yeah, all in all, highly recommend. It's very silly. I very think silly. you like it. I like some silly. Different for boys. Yeah. Different for boys. Um, we sort of debated putting this in with the others because it doesn't sit quite as comfortably with the rest we've selected no, but really important, I think, and really important to acknowledge um, different kinds of relationships and different kinds of pressures and different kinds of um, coming to terms mm. with oneself. Yeah, it's kind of a coming of age novel done in a very clever way. Mm. And it's not really a romance mm. in the same way that the other books in, in It's Complicated are. It's very short as well like it's only like i don't know 100 pages or so yeah and it has beautiful illustrations throughout which makes it even shorter mm. and on top of that it's censored mm. which is really clever i think so they certain words and phrases are completely blacked out so mm. you don't know what is there you can kind of guess from context clues but you're never going to get the full story because it's blacked out so it's the sort of thing that that uh young teenage boys might well say to each other concerning homosexuality that we wouldn't necessarily like to read over and over again. Exactly. But it's important to acknowledge that yeah. those kind of phrases are used. Yeah. And he's really trying to figure out what relationships are and mm. also what losing his virginity is as well because he's like, I'm not having heterosexual sex, so what counts as losing my virginity? Mm. And unfortunately, he is friends with this boy who has a lot of internalised homophobia mm. and shame mm. and they're having sex mm. but this guy, this friend of his, won't acknowledge that he is gay. Right. 
or that he is attracted to boys. Mm. So it's a it's quite a hard hitting one actually, mm. and I it's one of those books that you can read really fast because it is only a hundred pages. But I really found myself slowing down to take it in, mm. trying to decode what was being said under the surface and also underneath those blacked out lines. Mm. It's a very, very clever book. I think one of the most clever books I've read in a very long time mm. because it keeps you guessing and at the same time it tells you everything you need to know. Which, mm. how can you do that? How can you not not say everything and yet I knew exactly what he was saying? Well, I think it speaks to Patrick Ness, who oh, is yeah. one of our favourite authors for uh, for young people um, and has quite a... Uh, yeah, quite a, a repertoire and a, a collection of books behind under his belt at this point. Mm. Um, but a, sort of an unusual kind of... Um, diversion for him because I'm sort of yeah. used to thinking of him as kind of a fantasy writer, mm. a bit of a kind of um, futuristic sci-fi but this seems like it's a very grounded, real... Yeah, it um, definitely, it's very real, it's, I can imagine someone, you know, a young person now writing this book, like mm. this book, like it being their kind of confession, their secret mm. diary and it's very cleverly done. What I will say is it's, it's quite hard hitting but mm. don't worry, the ending is is not really sad and miserable. So, and I think that's also really clever. Putting some hope in at the end. Absolutely. Because he's, what he's going through is really quite challenging. And yeah. what he faces is really quite difficult. Um, but I think this is one of those books that will stay with you if you read it. Mm. I still think about it now. Wrap up of It's Complicated. And we obviously have all these brilliant books available to borrow from our libraries. Some of them are also available as ebooks and e audio books as well. But before we go, we've got a couple of quick fire questions that we're going to go through. Yes, right. So I've got some questions for you, Evie, as Evie is the romance queen and has read all of these. Um, of the five books, which is your favourite? Which would you take to a desert island? That is such a tricky one to answer. <laughs> I, you know what? I've got to go with my gut, and my gut says check and mate. I just nice. love Ali Hazelwood, love the way that she writes her books, so I'm gonna go with that one. Check and mate, there we go. Check and mate from Ali Hazelwood. Uh, your favourite character from all five books? Mm. You know what? I think it's gonna be Bradley from mm. Highly Suspicious and I'm Fairly Cute. We get such a brilliant insight into his mind. He's such a sweetheart. Sometimes you just wanna jump into the book and give him a big hug, because he's so lovely. Oh, I love that. So we've talked about uh, our five favourite from the past year, but are there any others that we would like to recommend? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, obviously I mentioned if you like Check and Mate, you'll also love The First Move by Jenny Ireland. I would say that if you like any of the LGBTQ plus romances, there's a few that we can recommend. Mm, um, I would like to re recommend uh, Rhubarb Lemonade by Oscar Kroon, uh, which is a really lovely story. It's sort of coming of age about a girl who goes to stay with her grandfather. Um, and builds a boat, but also finds some romance. Um, and it is um, really lovely and sort of one of those ones that will stay with you for a while afterwards. Mm. Well, that sounds really good. I need to read that one. It's quite short as well, isn't it? It's a nice short one, nice and snappy. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, I would say probably a lot of people have heard of this, but the first to die at the end and they both die at the end. Those mm -hmm. are both really good, really enjoyable. And people always say that if you like William Hussey, who wrote Broken Hearts and Zombie Parts, mm. that you'll like Simon James Green. Yes. And a little spoiler for later on, um, one of our books in the current is a Simon James Green book, Boy Like Me. So we'll be talking about that in one of the other videos. So if you like any of those, you'll like that one too. Another one to say is if you enjoy your uh, rom-coms with lots of pop culture references, uh, then A Complicated Love Story Set in Space by Sean David Hutchinson is another really great read that made me laugh a lot. So we've got some really brilliant mixture there. We've got some funny books, we've got some really heartfelt books, we've got some gritty books. But they are all complicated, would you agree? They are definitely all complicated. Well, thank you so much for watching and tune in next time for another video about some brilliant YA books for the current.